Did you know Nocturne's based in New Hampshire? That's like basically Canada, and Canada's full of communists, and I don't think communists are people. So I don't think they should be allowed to vote. Oh, you're, are you rolling? All right. Uh, if you've ever ridden a horse through an urban area and Michael Jordan's with a color-coordinated sweatsuit on, go ahead and change the channel. Uh, just call the police. They're on the way. Now that that's out of the way, welcome back and thanks for tuning into our program. This video is a bit of a departure from our last video because today we're talking about all-American burger-pounding, beer shotgunning, wife-beating, hometown Toby Keith blaring kind of products. These are about as American as Dale Earnhardt drinking and driving, regime changes, fiat currency, stolen cold Steve Austin, or that fishing trip I went on last week with my best friend Jack Twist. I miss you, Jack. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Katana R. R stands for rugged eyes because they're made out of metal or something. Alright guys, I couldn't keep that character up much longer. It was physically painful. Um, pick up where I left off. We're talking about the Katana R. This is a new housing that is becoming available shortly. Uh, it's manufactured by Nocturne Industries, the same guys that make the original Katana that is made with additive manufacturing or a really, really fancy 3D printing. I'm going to give you the brief rundown on all the particulars and answer kind of all the questions that we've been getting or we're gonna get about it. So, <clears throat> first and foremost, it's great. Just in short, the finish is awesome. It is hard coat anodized in most places and it has some um, H-series uh, Cerakote also. It accepts uh, standard 18 millimeter style tubes. It does not have an IR illuminator just like the Katana. Uh, as I go through this, you're going to find that it shares a lot of similarities with the original Katana. Um, it does still have the independent pod cut off when you stow the pods up like this on the mount or when you put it up on your helmet, flip it up in the mount. The housing empty weighs 140 grams. With the lightweight optics, it uh, on our scale came in right over 430 grams and with Standard like mil spec glass, I think it's somewhere around 530. So even with standard mil spec glass, it's a very light night vision system. It has a provision for offboard or battery packs. It still uses the CR123 onboard with the your full power control right here and the battery cap just like a flashlight. The power port here for the offboard battery pack is a limo connector but it is a double lot limo connector and i'll show you what that means so this is the original limo connection that a lot of night vision houses utilize this is the double lot limo it is smaller um, i'm not sure what advantage this provides but the overall connector is a little shorter the diameter of the connector is smaller it's still a four pin we have these available on our website so you can use them with the Nocturne Bat Pack or uh, any of their iterations of battery pack. And um, you can actually, because it's Fisher on the other side, you can plug this into an Argus battery pack or a 31 Alpha battery pack. Whatever you already have that accepts a Fisher connector on the battery pack side. So, um, one of the thing, one of the features that the Katana R has offers over the original Katana is it has a low battery indicator in it. So now it actually has a light pipe inside and it will notify you when your battery is starting to get low with a red light, just like every other, well, most every other night vision housing on the market. The Katana R does not offer manual gain. However, Katana, um, Nocturne is working on another housing I'm sure you're aware of called the Manicore. 
Um, if you just absolutely have to have the strength of uh, aluminum construction, there will be an option soon. Um, I personally like the form factor of the Katana R. I'm really looking forward to the Samurai, but this one's super cool too, just because it's simple. There's, I mean, it's on off. It, there's not a whole lot to it. There's nothing to mess with pod cut off. I mean, it's, it's just a good housing. The warranty, just like the original Katana is lifetime. So that's awesome. Really hard to beat. <clears throat> uh, again, I don't have too much else to say about this. Oh, the IPD system. Okay. Just like the original Katana, it works with the um, <clears throat> little cam system here and the force to overcome to set your uh, desired interpupillary distance. It is just like the original Katana. Uh, tension adjustable at the user level. So turning these two inboard screws here on the back of the bridge will adjust the tension or the amount of force you have to put on these pods to move them and to interface with the IPD system. So all that being said, the obvious next question is how does it compare to this thing? This housing has been, um, I'm not going to say wildly popular, but it has been very popular. This is the AB Night Vision RNVGA or ARNVG, or we haven't really decided what to call it, <clears throat> but this is also a really good option. Um, I guess I can start by what sets these apart. The RNVGA is slightly heavier than the Katana R. It, with lightweight optics, it comes in at like 30 grams more, I think 460 something. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it should be pretty accurate. I don't know the weight with mil-spec optics off the top of my head, but I'm sure they're posted on our website. So if you have to know that, go check it out. The RNVGA does include an IR illuminator where the Katana R doesn't. We've talked about this in past videos. I'm not going to deep dive into it, but basically I don't use an IR illuminator on my night vision device enough to justify having a potential indicator on my head that says, hey, shoot me in the face. So some people really like them for map reading. I've done a whole rant about this in other videos, so go back, check it out. In short, I mean, you really can't go wrong with either one. I guess one of the cool features about the RMVGA is the battery cap is on the back. Makes it a little bit more convenient when the goggles are stowed to change your battery. But, you know, both of these are gonna get about 25 hours runtime out of a CR a single CR123 and with a battery pack, I mean, 60, 80 hours. So how big of a deal is it that you have to change the battery and like how convenient that is? I don't know, that's for you to decide. Um, one of the things I like on the Katana R over the RMBGA is where your retention system interfaces with the goggle. On the RMBGA, and I've been consistent on this since the first time I saw one of these, I don't like these little bosses here. I feel like um, it's kind of clumsy. I bang my knuckles on it every time I use one of these. But again, that's personal preference. Really the, the reason I don't like them so much is when you have a lot of tension on your uh, lanyard system and you go to bring these goggles down from being stowed, sometimes it will pull these pods in directions that you don't necessarily want them to go until you fix your inner pupillary distance where you want it to be. With the Katana, just like the original Katana, um, your lanyard interface is right here on the back of the bridge, so it does not interfere with the uh, pod's interpupillary distance at all. I think that's about all I have to say about it right now. Um, I know we have some housings coming in soon. I don't quote dates when we're talking about Nocturne products because I don't know when they're gonna be here, but I know that's gonna be relatively soon. So keep an eye out on our social medias. Go follow our Instagram. That's probably going to be the easiest way to keep up with what we're doing every day. Uh, we all try to put stuff in the stories or make posts regularly. As always, please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps us get all this information out to more people that might want to see it. Um, thanks for watching. Dude, have I told you about my theory on Dick Cheney? Dude, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, I have it like on good authority that he actually shits out intensifier tubes. He, <laughs> he lays them like eggs.
Dude, I said something about this on Reddit, and now, like, I can't go anywhere without a DHS and CIA escort, so, I mean, it seems pretty legit. That way there's, like, black SUVs outside all the time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>